When I first became a wheelchair user, I never could have imagined that one day I'd be living my very best life right in the middle of the North York Moors. This area is made up of the most beautiful countryside that I assumed wasn't going to be the most accessible thing for me to explore. But the North York Moors Accessibility Project has been working with Visit England to develop and promote a range of accessible experiences. Enter me and my good friend Polly. We headed off for a two night stay to see how the North York Moors ranks as a holiday destination for disabled people and here's what we got up to. This vlog isn't part of the partnership with Visit England but I am going to be doing stuff on Instagram and writing blog posts and stuff and as part of that they have provided this press trip and put together the itinerary for us so I thought I'd better disclose that at the start but I'm really looking forward to the next few days. I've got my friend Polly coming along with me. We're gonna explore the gorgeous, gorgeous area, the coast, the countryside. Today is Thursday and we're gonna be heading to Dalby Forest. It's known as Yorkshire's Great Forest. I've been there once before, but the experience we're doing in today is adaptive cycling. They've got loads of different cycling routes and they've actually got an adaptive cycling service, so to speak. And they've got one, I don't know whether you say ICE or ICE or IC, but it looks quite similar to the one I tried this time last year. If you saw that vlog, we went and stayed in the log cabin and we took out a Boma 7 on the Derbyshire Hills and it was truly one of the best things I've ever done in my life. So I'm really hoping this is going to be a similar experience. I've had to have a bit of a word with myself because I'm so excited. to vlog while it's a little bit quiet i'm not sure i have so we'll talk properly about the cycling later it was very good but very very tiring we're just sat in the cafe at the minute they've got an absolutely lovely cafe at dalby forest they've got hot food so if the weather's a bit miserable it's a lovely peaceful little area to come and sit down and warm up until you're ready to go on your next adventure okay i've had a rest suitably restored Next on the itinerary is we're going to go and get a tramper. You can rent these from Dalby Forest Visitor Centre and we're going to have a little explore in that. It's my first time using a tramper so I don't really know what to expect but let's give it a go. <laughs> just over halfway through the trail we're doing this is one of a few accessible trails they're developing at the minute we think it's called the ellen Elleburn. Elleburn. Elleburn trail it's been lovely it's been no problem at all to do in the tramper gorgeous gorgeous scenery as you might be able to see and yeah I, i'm really enjoying it my nose is so red <laughs> it was the tramplers maiden voyage so i got to be the first person that used it it was a lot of fun. It was a really lovely trail. It felt like just the right length as well, energy-wise. Like, I was able to enjoy it, but I'm ready to get home now. And I really hope I'll get to come back here to Dolby Forest. It's amazing what they've been doing. I didn't realise they had so many access provisions in place as well, so it's definitely something that's somewhere I want to come a bit more often. Now we are going to head over to Gothland. We are going to be staying at Inn on the Moor for the next two nights. That's apparently a very accessible, wheelchair-friendly hotel as well, so I'm very excited to see that. until I turn this camera around and show you the view out of my bedroom window. Look at that! Oh my god! Oh, I'll have to remember to shut my curtains later so I don't get any diners looking in. I'm in the ground floor accessible room at Inn the Moor and it's beautiful. It's so stylishly decorated, it's so lovely and cosy. A nice little space to get ready in the morning here. The most beautiful place to have a cup of tea and read your book ever there. Most importantly at all, we've got the tea supplies down here. We've also got what I believe are some Highland cows to keep me company. And then we've got this very stylishly decorated wet room. We've got a shower stool, which is an absolute blessing. Plenty of grab rails. Oh my goodness, I love how they've decorated this place. That's the thing with accessible rooms. Often you'll go and they somehow feel a little bit clinical and they don't feel like the same care has been taken with the decor as perhaps a non-accessible room. 
Oh, but the deck, I love it. Let me talk to you about the cycling now because I need to go and have a rest. So as you might have seen, the adaptive cycling is such a cool experience. I just don't think I was necessarily the right fit for the offering that's there at the minute. But in the same breath, I know that people with other disabilities and other conditions also watch these vlogs. And honestly, I'm not even just saying it. If you ever get the chance to do something like that and you feel it's suitable for you, please do it. There is no feeling quite like it. I've, I've been doing this chronic illness thing for a long time. I know how important it is to stop before you get tired and to pace yourself. And for the most part, I'm usually very okay with that. Today, when I was out there doing the cycling and I knew because my legs were hurting, I thought I have to stop now, otherwise I'm going to be in an absolute state for the next few days. And I don't think ever before in my life have I wanted so badly to ignore it and to carry on. That's something, I've not had that urge for a very long time, but I was enjoying myself so much that I just wanted more than anything to just be a little bit stronger so I could keep on going. And when you live with an energy limiting condition, I think that's probably the strongest testament you can get for how fun an activity is. So I suppose that was a long winded way of saying I am in an incredible amount of pain now, but it was worth it. Yeah, we have had a really good day all around. It's been amazing to see what Dolby Forest is doing to make sure it's accessible for everybody. And they mentioned that they are struggling at the minute with just getting the word out that these things are there for people who want them. So whether it's the adaptive cycling or the tramper, which I also really enjoyed a lot more than I was expecting to. I've talked a lot in the past about how mobility scooters I, I don't love, but for some reason that tramper was absolutely awesome. So if you're, I mean, whether you're in the area or you're considering coming to the North York Moors for a holiday, I would really urge you to go and have a look at Dalby Forest. It was such a gorgeous environment. And although I am shattered, I've had such a lovely day. This has to be the nicest breakfast spot ever. Mm. That's such a cute look as well. We're going to get the steam railway this morning, which is something I've always wanted to do. It looks really cool. There is a stop near Gotham where we're staying, but we've been told it's up a quite big hill. So their recommendation was to taxi over to Pickering, get on the steam train from there, and the steam train's going to take us to Whitby. So we get a little bit longer on the train. It might work a little bit better with my slightly questionable power chair. And we've got really nice plans for the day as well. I'm just, I'm so excited to experience this steam train. I think I'd better put this down for a bit and just get myself a little bit more awake. <laughs> that said, I'm actually not doing too bad. I almost don't say it. I've had some strong painkillers and I've had a cup of tea and I was prepared to feel worse than I do. And anybody who has a chronic illness who's watching this will know that that feels like an unexpected bonus in situations like these. So I'm very excited to make the most of today. beautiful views and naturally it's not quite a clear day for us but we're hoping it's going to clear up a little bit and it's still really cool it's unlike anything I've done before actually so should say as well for wheelchair users don't panic because you think it looks like it's going to be a steep ramp I did the ramp myself and my wheelchair is honestly not the best but it was absolutely fine it was it's not as steep as you think it's going to be there's lots of room to maneuver in the wheelchair space so we've just parked the wheelchair there it feels very safe and just come in and seats and the seats very comfy as well. So when you come out of Whitby spa Spatian, <laughs> when you come out of Whitby spa <laughs> when you come out of Whitby Station, come out of the side entrance and turn left and then you'll find the ramp that goes down cold can't really feel my hands but we've just had a nice walk down to the seafront and we're gonna go on if you can see it this pier here 
also nice and accessible. I've not been to Whitby for a few years, so I actually can't remember anything, and I don't think I've ever done it in my power chair before, but something for everybody. Oh my god, so much hair. It's getting very windy and rainy out there. But we've just taken a lift up to the first floor. We're in the indoor exhibition bit now. Uh, we're just gonna wait and see if the weather clears up. Goodness me, oh dear, oh that took a turn. Miserable, miserable weather. Whitby Abbey is made up of a lot of grass and my power chair is not the best power chair. So power chair and wet grass and mud, not a good mix. So we have just come home, uh, which is fine because honestly this room is like the loveliest room ever. So I'm not mad about it. Before I flop, I'll just show you a bit of the hotel because there's some really lovely loungy communal areas that are also very accessible. They made the room up while um, I was out and honestly, I'm not showing that my clothes are on that chair, <laughs> my mess. I also, you know I like to be honest, I am going to feed this back, but if this is the accessible room, do be aware that this door is very heavy to push, even if pull even, even if you're not using a wheelchair, so just bear that in mind. But once you come out, it's all lovely and flat here. Okay, there's no one here, it's fine. Oh, I got caught vlogging. This is the breakfast area. We sat there this morning and it was lovely. The big group came in at this point and I got a bit self-conscious, but I was just saying there were all these lovely communal areas. These got quite busy in the evenings. Lots of people came and sat together for a drink downstairs. Lovely bar, lovely fire. And it's a family run business. So there was just a really nice vibe all around. Oh, I'm being watched, I'm being watched, I'm being watched. <laughs> Oh, can't even style that out. <laughs> They've been doing a lot of really good work in the Abbey recently. They've really been focusing on their accessibility. They've got a fabulous lift inside. I don't know this for definite, but I really got the sense that the team have had disability awareness training. It was definitely really positive interactions, which I realise might sound like a really small thing, but I, with experience, I do pick up on it more and more where people seem much more confident having conversations about disability. We looked around the museum and exhibition on the first floor. That was really good. It didn't just focus on Bram Stoker and Dracula. It covered all kinds of other history as well, which was really cool. So we spent a long time reading that. And all the while we were hoping the rain was going to calm, calm down because, oh my goodness me, it was apocalyptic. <laughs> they actually closed it off at 3 p.m. So just before we left, they closed it off because of the high winds. <laughs> That's how bad the weather was. Now, it, you can get around the abbey and the ruins outside and you can do it in a wheelchair, apparently. But because it had rained so heavily and the ground was sodden and my wheelchair is problematic at best, I made a decision not to do it in my wheelchair. There is, however, a video on the Whitby Abbey website. I'm going to leave a link to that below because that covers all of the things to expect ahead of your visit and I believe they've got some good access information as well in there so I'm going to link that below in case you're thinking of visiting and hopefully that'll um, help you make an informed decision. I need to move, I can't, I can't procrastinate any longer, I know I'll feel better after I've had the shower, I just, oh, just trying to dredge up the energy to actually get in the shower. There's a shower seat as well, it's like the best accessible bathroom so I don't know why I'm procrastinating this. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> I'm going to try and reenact what just happened when I got up from my rest. So let's imagine your eyes are shut. There, like that. Your eyes are shut. And just opening them, opening them, coming around. Highland cow. <laughs> I've briefly thought about putting makeup back on for dinner, but I can feel that my skin is right on the cusp of getting a bit angry with me. So I thought, you know what? I'm not going to bother. The shower in this room is out of this world. I could have sat in there for hours. It was gorgeous. It's obviously got, oh my god, my hair's so muddy. I, I struggle with stuff like this where experiences have been really kindly gifted. I, it's a very tricky line to walk. On the one hand, I want to do a really good job for these brands and shout about them because they're doing amazing things. But at the same time, I know that other disabled people watch these vlogs and genuinely use them to help book their own trips. 
So there are a few things that I am going to feed back on. If somewhere is truly inclusive, then they are open to feedback because in the long run, it helps everybody. It helps them to improve. And that means that even more disabled people can give those businesses their custom. So at this stage, it is, it is tricky. It's not something that I would blanket recommend, but then there aren't a lot of things that I would blanket recommend anyway, because disability is such a spectrum and every person's unique situation is going to dictate how and whether they do each specific thing. Yeah, it's something I've been really conscious of at the minute, and especially if I'm going to hopefully be doing this kind of thing a little bit more if my health allows it because that's a whole other question yeah it is it's a tricky line it's a tricky balance so i hope you'll bear with me while i try and get the best balance possible had another really lovely day excited for one more day of plans tomorrow so i will see you then good morning it's our final day today we're just getting ready to check out of the hotel which does make me really sad i'm not sure it would necessarily be the right choice for somebody for somebody with a chronic illness like mine but hopefully by the time this vlog goes up, my blog post will be up. And in there, I'm going to link some really lovely self-catering cottages that are, have got loads of access adjustments as well. But that said, the staff have been so lovely. Gorgeous environment, gorgeous food. I'm really looking forward to breakfast this morning. So I will be sad to leave. Now, the plan for this morning is to go to Helmsley Walled Garden. And that's somewhere I've never been before. I've heard about it quite a lot and yet I'm still not entirely sure what's there. I've also heard really good things about the cafe they have there. It's called the Vinehouse Cafe. And that's where we're going to be getting lunch this afternoon so i'm looking forward to that and then we've got more plans after lunch but i'll tell you about that then i think nice and wheelchair accessible here and I think you could technically go on the glass on the grass if you did it with enough gusto but there's lots of like little paths and hidden bits as well so found a very cool bench very cool bench situation here Polly's just inspecting the back of it how I look versus how I feel <laughs> been informed that big apple at the top there is about the size of my head half the size of, your <laughs> half head. The size of my head i'll take it i've had worse didn't they do a female version of the hulk recently because i feel like that's what i'm channeling the weather has turned a bit but we found a little bit of shelter oh you can't even see the rain on camera it's still raining but we have been informed there's chickens here we've been given some food to feed the chickens and this might be my favorite thing that we've done i've just got weirdly excited over seeing some vegetables I'm very excited over the chickens this is such a little hidden gem i'm so glad we came here how's it going oh, oh my gosh <laughs> it's a chicken apocalypse come on there's ducks polly there's ducks oh my god i love the ones who look like they've got trousers oh, on oh my god look at the black one oh come on you keep running come on no slackers around here come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> Come on, lady. <gasps> Come on, then, babies. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I do just keep leaving my wheelchair and having a little wander around, but as long as your wheels can handle a little bit of gravel on the floor. It is very easy to navigate. We've just come for lunch in the beautiful Vinehouse Cafe. This is just kind of adjacent to the Ward Garden. It's absolutely beautiful in here, really lovely vibes. They've got a really gorgeous menu. We're both still very full, so we can't manage a meal. There wasn't any vegan cakes today, which is a shame, but I've got a nice drink coming. Polly's got some treats coming. This bit is actually quite easy to navigate by wheelchair as well. It gets a little bit narrower up there, but still, again, no steps. But you can tell they've really thought it through and they really paid attention to access for people who were using mobility aids and that is so brilliant to see especially in a place like this. We've just made it over to Sutton Bank it's an absolutely gorgeous area we've rented a tramper again and we are a little bit short on time so we're not going to be able to do the white horse trail like we'd hoped because apparently that has incredible views but we've got a little accessible route that's also going to give us some gorgeous views along the way. I'm dead excited about having the tramper again it turns out I really love doing this so let's do it. Very 
windy. I really hope you can hear me because you are not going to believe it when I turn this camera around what we're looking at right now. You just wait for this. It would have been worth it just for the ride on the tram but to get a view like this as well. And we've not even been going that long either. I hope there's lots of things you'll be able to take away this, from this vlog and the things we've done. But if you can get to Sutton Bank and if you can if you feel well enough to rent a tramper and even to just do a short drive, I I really hope you can experience this because it's so cool. It's so beyond what I thought would be possible to do when you've got wheels in tow. So definitely, definitely recommend it. And just like that, we're back where we started. I've had such a lovely day. I, I was just saying to Polly actually, today was the day I thought the least about. I thought, oh yeah, that sounds cool. But then I was more focused on the other two days. But everything we've done today I've absolutely loved. I think that Helmsley, not just the walled garden but the little town itself is such a hidden gem. And then the walk this afternoon at Sutton Bank with the tramper. I've talked a lot in the past about how mobility scooters have never really suited me that well and I don't know what it is about the tramper that makes it different but every time I've used it, you know the whole two times that I've used it, I've absolutely loved it and I already can't wait to do it again. I am, um, oh, let me show you actually. So a fair few outdoor public places have got trampers now and a lot more are getting them, which is really cool. And I used Lake District Mobility to book one today. And if you do your little training like I did today, which really didn't take that long, and if I can pass it, anybody can, trust me. I've got my little tramper training card now. <laughs> I love that, tramper training, which means if I want to hire one in the future, um, I can just show them this and I don't have to do the training again. It, it, it was just so wonderful. I loved it. I came back and I was absolutely buzzing. I'm slight, it's dying down now because I'm really tired and I really need to go to bed, but what a brilliant day. In fact, what a brilliant few days. I've really loved this whole experience. It still doesn't even feel real that it's even happened. Like what an absolute privilege to get to do this. And I'm already excited to go away and write my blog post. And I just, I, I feel really, really lucky. Right, I need to stop waffling on. I need to stop waffling on. I need to go and rest. I'm going to prioritise rest for the next few days and just make sure I'm taking care of myself. It has, it has been a lot. I've looked after, I'm quite pleased that I've looked after myself as much as possible, but yes. Definitely a few days dedicated to rest now. I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog, maybe found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I I really, really do appreciate it. It really means a lot. You can subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.